Now, many of you wrote to us here on AM yesterday concerned about the rise in youth crime that you're seeing in our communities. We're seeing it in the dairies and shops that are being ram raided with offenders, sometimes barely old enough to go to high school. So what does it stem from? Well, this is what the Police Association had to say. Look at where it starts from. I mean, we've got massive truancy problem in New Zealand, and anecdotally, I'm getting told that you know, since COVID came, the number of children attending school has dropped dramatically, and that's a recipe for crime. We've got to stop these young kids getting involved in crime in the first place. I mean, an 11-year-old driving a car in a ram raid. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. So we thought we'd follow up on that claim from Chris Cahill there and find out just how much of an issue is truancy in our schools. And we're joined by Levon Grant, who works on the front lines of getting kids back into school with the Strive Community Trust in South Auckland. Levon, thank you very much thank for you. being with us this morning. So you heard the police association there saying that there is a link between truancy and youth crime. Is that what you see? Um, to be honest, yes, it is a, a factor that we have come across. And sometimes you have to think, where does it stem from? And it does come back to the home base with our families. We've got families who are currently struggling at the moment, so the priority for the tamariki, it's not first priority, it's a second priority. It's about getting food on the table. So you're saying education is not a first priority right now? For some of the families, they are struggling ever since the last two years where Strive has tried to, we would try to work collectively to find out what support mechanism we can help our whanau. But again, it's the high cost of living, it's the jobs loss, it's the social isolation that our families are now today are looking at what means of income that they can support their family. So are you saying that young kids are going out and they're making money to support their family instead of going to school? That is a true fact. We had a lot of high school students last year who opted to leave year 11 and 12 to find some form of income to help their parents. That is a true fact. So what age are we talking about? We're looking at 15 and 16. Wow, and how are they making money? I guess it's not all crime, but how much of a factor is that? It's a huge factor because, I mean, large Polynesian Māori families, they've got kids who are seeing the pressure on our families. So, you know, they're looking for um, early leaving exemption. That's where we get the agreement with MOE to help these tamariki looking for jobs, whether it's in Countdown or Pack and Save or their parents' workplace. Even though it's a low income, they still have to follow those rules which are applicable by working after those hours because between nine and three, those are obviously the hours they're going to be in some form of schooling. Mm. So some of them do go part-time, but the main emphasis is kids do want to support their parents. So you must have a really hard time if you're going to families and saying we need to get these kids back into school and these families are having to choose between surviving, having enough money for the week to mm. pay for food, or sending their kids off to school, it's not like you're going to be getting support from the whole family for them to go to school. Not really. I mean, the schools are doing a phenomenal job by connecting and engaging and pulling in all the different resources to help the family. So it's there. But at the end of the day, there's accountability that takes place with the parents. They've got to take ownership too of their space. And sometimes when you see those young people out there, it's like you've got to look at from different... And from an eagle's eye view, you've got to look at from 300 feet up high to find out, OK, what's going into that young boy's space? Why is he out in the field? Why hasn't he got that supervision? Where are the caregivers? So there's a lot of questions we look at, but at the end of the day, they've got to take responsibility of that child, like that 11-year-old. There's a lot of questions around that. Well, it. and a lot of our viewers were writing in yesterday saying the way to crack down on youth crime is to crack down on their parents and punish them. Would that work? You know, to be honest, that, that is a loaded question. It really is because, you know, for all parents, they're all at different mindset. They're all at a different space where they are at. You've got some families who are so into getting their child's education. You've got that lot, you've got that A bracket, you've got the B bracket where you've got families still fearful going back into the school. And then you've got another bracket, the C bracket, where parents are looking at what ways we can survive from day to day. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, COVID will naturally have had some kind of impact, but in terms of truancy rates, if we look at those numbers of kids who are out of school now, um, 
and, and in, in 2021, 59.7% of students mm. at, attended schools regularly. That's a lot that aren't, almost 40%. But if you go back to pre-pandemic, early 2019, it's 57.7 kids attending schools regularly. So not much difference. That's true. But that's a lot of kids. How many, how many students do you think we are seeing consistently out of school as a, a, a rough percentage, I guess, or how many are you dealing with? Well, when we, the first pandemic that took place 20th of March, 26th of March 2020, for the whole year we were sitting at 900. That weren't going to school? That weren't going to school. And, and how many, what kind of area are you talking? And we're looking at my catchment area of Otara, Mangere, Papatoi and Otahu. So four suburbs, the there's four 900 suburbs. kids not going now, to school. Now today, we're looking at quadruple the numbers today. And from what age? Um, from primary all the way up to high school. So, I mean, primary starts at five years old. That's correct, from five. And it's because we've come across family who are really fearful. They're extremely fearful of sending their time again. Even though we've done the engagement, we've listened to their fears, we've grabbed the outside internal resources, and even within Strive, we pulled in social workers, youth aid, every kind of support. But still, there's a reluctance. So what, need, reluctance. what can we do? If I was a fairy godmother, I would, or if I was God, I don't know. There's a miracle that's probably needed. But I think that would have had to go back to the top, right to the top, that's the head of our, of our nation, and come up with solutions, talk to the people, engage with those organisations that do work in the community. Because at the end of the day, we are, our generation's responsible for our younger generation to have an education. Levon, I think there's probably a lot of people who would say that you're a fairy godmother <laughs> with the work that you're doing. Thank you very much for joining us on AM this morning.